Yo, 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 Thought Warriors, what is up? I Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel Lynn Lindsay. Goddamn right. <laughs> so, mm. you brought the cowboy hat in studio. Yeah. I enjoy it. Can't you? I do too. I know. I really do. So why is it that your first I just like it. instinct I just is to hate? It was not. I, I, it true. was absolutely not. And for those listening and not watching, I wanted them to know because I feel like you bring a particular energy when you have the hat on. So I wanted people to know that. What kind of energy? It's more positive. More positive energy? It's more positive. You guys feel happier like, with the hat. You guys feel like I'm more positive and happier with the cowboy hat? Don't ask like Alea. She's gonna be like, Alea. no. Alea is so Alea is my nemesis. <laughs> she is. And like every single she day, really I find I want to just find a different because Alea is such a worthy adversary. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, she's she's on top of it. Yeah, she's on she top of it. it. She she walks around with this like this she, this smile on her face, but it's kind of like a fuck you smile. It it's is. It's like <laughs> fuck you. I like her. She's nice. She's gonna go far. Um, Ashley's here. Ashley's actually in studio. I sure am. Quirk Ashley in the studio. Yeah. Smashly. Ashley came in town for NAACP Awards. You were not there. She was not there. Okay, but she had an excuse. What difference? I had an excuse too. What was it? I, I had was, to watch the Lakers game? I was tired and I didn't want to go. No, you were tired. I was super tired. By the way, here's the thing. Of all the award shows that you could miss, the NAACP Awards is the one that you wouldn't want to miss because sure. it is just a beautiful black. Uh, and it was. And you, you know what I mean? That's the one you don't want to miss. It's always, it feels very uniquely gratifying to be recognized by the NAACP. Agreed. But just one particular time after South By, after, the, uh, after doing like 15 podcasts last week, I just, I just need some rest. I'm, you guys, I'm burning the kettle at both ends right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then the WrestleMania is coming up, so I just. You gotta go. I'm going to WrestleMania. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the way you have, somebody said to me when I posted that I did Dune or watch Dune that you needed to pick between being the number one voice in wrestling, something about Dune, and there's a third thing that you're on too. Maybe it was the cowboy thing. They were like, you need to pick. You need to decide who you are. Are you the number one voice in wrestling? Are you whatever you said? Maybe you said it on a ring of verse with Dune. Or are you a cowboy? I'm a cowboy who has devoted his life to Dune <laughs> and is also the number one voice in wrestling. Can, can I ask you a question? And, I, I, and I'm serious. Can, can a nigga have interest? <laughs> can a nigga have interest? You guys, I'll ask you guys right now. Everyone's always telling black men specifically black men. Oh my God. Uh, get serious. Get like this. Can a nigga play the game? Can a nigga love Doom? Can a nigga love wrestling? Can a nigga who lives this life being scrutinized and being oppressed, can he just live? What's wrong with me being a cowboy? What's wrong with me loving Doom? What's wrong with me loving wrestling? What's wrong with me having hobbies? Can a nigga cut his nails? Uh, I have to go. I have to I, go. They're distracting. I have to go to. So look, this is why I haven't cut my nails. Can a nigga not be criticized? This is this is why I have to cut my nails. Okay, so I I normally just cut my nails, right? Yes. But I want to get a manicure, and I haven't had time, so I don't want to cut my nails and get the manicure. So I'm gonna go get the manicure today. You know what? I'm gonna start commenting. You know what? That's fine. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, oh, please, yeah, as yeah. if you spare me from criticism right. on this podcast. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Yeah, I need to cut my nails. It's a thing. But don't... See what you just did? You just deflected from the fact that everything that I try to do, that's not... See, everything that I try to do, I criticize for. Hey, grow up and stop caring about Dune. No. I never said that. I'm not going to stop caring about Dune, guys. Dune is fantastic. It really is fantastic. Grow up and stop caring about wrestling. You know what? With all the stress that I got... Why can't a nigga just watch wrestling? He can. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, the judge loves wrestling. You told me this before. Yeah, and the, he doesn't watch it now, but, but like my, faithfully. My goal would be to go see wrestling in Dallas when SmackDown or Raw goes there or AEW. Shout he would out go to with AEW, you. And I'll go with the judge. He would go with you, yeah. But no, he wouldn't. Why? He wouldn't go. 
because I was in Dallas. No. And I tried to hang out with your sick. parents. And your parents didn't want to hang out with me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go into the judge's court. I'm going to go into the judge's court. I'm going to sit down Chambers. there. Chambers. Chambers? Well, I don't have to go to the court first. Um, You can walk through. It's like, it's big. Is it public? Uh, Can I just court. go watch the judge? No, you have to go through um, security, like main security and then security on the floor. And then like they have to have your name in the system like to know that you're coming. Why? I don't know. At least that's how it's been for me. Why I on God's green just... earth would I not be able to? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I've just you, you probably It's to... probably a security concern. But if my tax dollars are putting niggas in jail, <laughs> I want to be able to go and watch and make sure things are above board. You you really do need to go to Dallas and go to a hearing or a trial or something like that. I want to see him in action. I want to see. He would perform. Yeah, I want to see him in action. <laughs> All rise. All rise. Are you following Kate Middleton thing? No. No. Who's following it back there? I, I know enough. But are you interested? In it? I'm. I know so much about it. Alea, break it down. No, that it's was actually Ashley. Ashley. That was oh, that Ashley? Ashley? Oh, yes. excuse me. <laughs> Ashley uh, uh, knows Ashley, about it. Ashley, break it down. Okay. So here's what I know. She was getting stomach surgery. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Um, and she got it around like December, January time. Right? She got in the same exact hospital that King Charles went to for his cancer. His cancer treatment and everything had a bunch of people come by to see if he was doing okay. But nobody came to visit her mm. while she was being, vi like, in there, right? So then they started posting pictures of, like, a woman in a car. Oh, that must be Kate with her mom. A woman in William's car. Oh, it must be her, but she has on the giant sunglasses. It can be any white woman, like, honestly. So people are like, well, where is, he? where is she? Why is she not being, like, visited? Where is she at? It's been, like, months, right? And then they post a picture. And it's her, and she's with her smiling children. but. If you start looking at the picture, her hair is like sinking into her 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 uh, shirt and her kids look strange and they're wearing the same outfits that they wore on another uh, like thing. And they don't do that. They don't take pictures in the same outfits because they're like special people. Right. So people are like, what what is this picture? And then they took it down. They took it down everywhere. <laughs> and they're like, oh, sorry. Uh, actually, um, it's me, Kate. And I very much like love editing photos and that was an accident and I was just having a little fun and experimenting and it, it was like no no you weren't is she dead no get to the affair oh that's that's where I what I think it is I saw a TikTok theory about it oh my god and I'm thinking do you do you know about the affair in the I know I know a little bit about it not that much I don't know that much about it either but allegedly they're saying it, there was no surgery. Yes. It's that he's been having this off and on affair with this woman who they photographed. And, and I saw this conspiracy theory that said the reason that they're, they're putting this woman out front and they're showing her picture and they're talking about her in a positive way is because allegedly William is Charles. Allegedly, she's, he's having an affair with this woman and allegedly she's pregnant. That was the conspiracy on TikTok. And so Kate's like, fuck this. And she's leaving. She's like, I'm, I'm not doing this. And that's why she's in hiding. So the woman's pregnant? Ale this is a, a, the a theory on TikTok. You mean to tell me that Prince... He's definitely ha probably having an Wait affair. Wait a minute. So Prince William allegedly has a woman pregnant. You mean to tell me Prince William can't come up with that $500? She wants to keep it. That was also in the, the TikTok. She said... I think he thought he could talk her out of it. This is the conspiracy theory. And she said she's decided to keep it. So, and, that, and Kate had a nervous breakdown. That's what they said. It was not that she was a stomach issue. When Kate found out she was pregnant and keeping it, Kate had a nervous breakdown. That's so this the is theory. the big one, though, because the kids have not been seen either. So people think that she just picked up the kids and, like, ran away. She's like, I'm As done. She should. I'm not doing this anymore. But As actually, my, my favorite theory is the BBL theory, that she's just gone to get a BBL uh, and Alea. is recovering. <laughs> Hold on. Alea, I okay. have not Hold seen on. that First anywhere. of all, this is, this is so much more fun than I thought it would be. Can you imagine if she just came back with that thing swinging? Especially if, think about this. No. So, I, I like to combine the theories. I like to think 
that she got a BBL because he stepped out. So think about if there's this world where Kate Middleton, like, leaves and then she starts fucking with Gunna. You're not going to be able to fuck with Gunna unless you got that thing swinging. So maybe she went to go get the BBL. She's going to pop up in Miami. Maybe she went to get the BBL after he stepped out. And now she knows she got to get in with these rappers because that's the way you get back at the motherfucking, the Royals, man. Gunna? You, you get back at the Royals by... Ray J single? Ray J is single right now. If you want to... Give her a British rapper, like Skep. Nah, it's not going to work. Why? Because Why that's that? not... Ske, like Skepta is... That, they're looking at Skepta as one of their own. Shout out to Skepta, by the way. Shout out to Skepta. I fuck with Skepta. But you can't go Skepta. You got to go love and hip hop based type person or just above that like with a like you got to go a nigga from Atlanta Kate Middleton got to let a nigga from Atlanta smash Quavo Quavo perfect that's it that's the one Kate Middleton and Quavo if she go get the BBL and then go to Quavo you know go to Qua- the, the Royals would get turned upside down they don't want no brown babies and then all the kids would be, become Migos fans and all of that stuff. This is perfect for me. That's way more interesting than I thought it would be. I don't care, though. Thanks, Leia, for the BBL theory. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't care, though. So, but I'll ask you a question real quick, just before we move off this. This is another reason why I think black women are unfairly criticized. Okay? Okay. So, you have... Prince William's mistress, Mm -hmm. who is allegedly pregnant, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Mm -hmm. And she is electing to keep the baby, and we know why. The baby has has royal blood. blood. (laughs) Now, I'm sure this woman that he's having an affair with is not a commoner. Is she a commoner? She's not a commoner. She's not. I'm sure she's not a commoner because he probably doesn't have very much proximity. So she was like kind of, that family was kind of groomed to, like, marry the royal family. Apparently, it was supposed to be her older sister, but that didn't work out. So it was her, and they went to the same school, and then it worked out. Because Kate really wasn't supposed to be that woman. Yes. Yes. It's like the Princess Diana story. Like, literally. Right. Now, these these people are all nobility. Princess Diana was definitely nobility. But I'll say this. So what I'm saying is, there's this narrative, I feel, sometimes, that... It's only black ladies that have children for proximity to wealth. There's this this avatar of it, and it's this chick hanging out backstage at the concert or on the sidelines of the game. Man, white women invented that fucking game. They invented that game. And by the way, the entire game itself is only possible because of patriarchy. Patriarchy makes it almost necessary for a woman to connect herself to a man for breeding purposes and nesting purposes. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I think that I, I'm, I'm just saying. So a lot of this. Who else has done it? What do you mean? What, what, what other white women have paved the way? A bunch of them. I mean, I can't name them all offhand. It happens all the time. Black white women do it to No, athletes. I agree with you. I'm just I'm just off I, the top I of will my tell head you one thing right now. I will come back with a list. A list. Really to be honest with you, it's white women now in the BBL world that are doing it cuz these young negro rappers and athletes cannot stop nutting. They won't stop nutting. It's more people nothing. Okay. Like, it's just the reckless every... I'm, I'm literally saying this. Like, I'm not trying to call any of these brothers out, but I'm just saying. I saw Justin Jefferson. She was white. The girl that... that from, from LSU, the girl that he got pregnant. Oh, he has a kid. She, yeah, she was white. Trayvon Diggs and Joy Chavis. Like, it, it... She's not white. She's not white, but I'm just saying. Every single week, reckless nutting is happening, and then it gets messy, and people wonder why. He probably Anthony, gives condoms. A- Anthony Edwards. The, because the AIDS scare is over, I feel like reckless nutting is back. We, we, people stopped reckless nutting for a little while. I, I just don't understand why people act like there aren't other STDs out here. Like, herpes is a real... Herb dog? 
know a lot of people who have it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying it's out here. I do not understand why people are not protecting themselves. Well, what I, what I, what I, what I don't want to do is like get into like shaming people that have. No, I'm not shaming them. I'm just specifically saying specifically AIDS because it's common. Yeah, right. No, I'm talking about herpes. Yeah. So, so, but like what I am saying though is that use condoms. That's bottom line. Like use condoms. Even but maybe they don't. Maybe this is what they want. Maybe it is Prince. Like the, the, to think that Prince William, and we spent way too much time on this because we got to get to President Trump, ex-President Trump, but to think that Prince William was just nutting with everything allegedly. on the line. Allegedly. Allegedly. With everything on the line. Think about it. He doesn't care. He doesn't give a fuck. And he's now... He's about to be king. He's going to he be king care. pretty soon. Just think about how many reckless kids he's going to have out there if he becomes a king with this type of nutting behavior that he has. It's interesting to me. That was a fantastic breakdown from Ashley and Alea. We should give Ashley and Alea a corner to break down something in pop culture that's just too young for me. Because I saw people talking about it and I couldn't bring myself to care. Now I'm invested. Well, because you've created a new storyline that definitely doesn't exist, and that's the BBL. She had the BBL, too, uh, because of the mistress. You've, you, you created that, so now that's why you're interested. Last thing I'll say before we move on. That's not as shocking as you think it would be. Like, I worked in Bizarro World for almost a decade. People change. People do stuff. People come out and they, they fucking end up doing stuff you've never seen them do before. Sure. Kate Middleton is still a young lady, and she would have the rest of her life to antagonize the royals. With that booty? With that ass. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. Let me ask you a question. Y'all tripping right now. I bet y'all never envisioned a world. She's not a royal, but y'all never envisioned a world where Adele was with these niggas and it happened. Yes, I could. Really? Remember when she was like dressing up and like... That's after though. No. Wait, hold on. See? Wait, wait, wait. So Adele, when she went to the Notting Hill Carnival, that was her, that was her announcing to the world that she was down for the nation. The nation of insemination by an African nation. Is she pregnant? No, she's not. But what I'm saying is that was her when a, when Adele left because she was married to a white guy, right? Yes. When Adele left. Let see when she had these bandu knots in her head. That was after. That was after the divorce. And then that was around the time that it was Skepta and now it's like Rich Paul. She dated Skepta? She dated Skepta for a while. I did not know that. Yeah. Like, and by the way, that's Adele being Adele. She she was with them for a while, and now she's with us. Uh, President Trump. Um, interesting, 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 interesting statements made by the president. Uh, your favorite president, the president of Quit that. Yeah, cut vagina. That <laughs> it just gets me every time. <laughs> like that. Uh, recent campaign stop. He was actually. Think, trying to catch a plane, and he talked about what will happen if he is not elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath. Okay. Um, so, uh, Trump's spokespeople tried to clean this up. They came back and they said oh, they the president was talking in the context of... The ex-president was talking in the context of the auto industry. And he was talking about uh, the auto industry and its struggles during the Biden administration and that he was making reference to the fact that if he wasn't reelected, if he is reelected, the auto industry will rebound and he would bring jobs back from overseas into America. But if he's not elected, that it would be a bloodbath in the auto industry. That is what they are saying. Okay, question didn't a lot of these unions renegotiate and they're in a better position now? And didn't Biden go and speak to them? And like, So this is what I would say. I, I, I would say that to that, given, giving Biden credit. I'm not giving him credit. I'm just saying he supported the unions. He I think that's a little too far to did say he that not he supported go down, the Did he not go down there and say that he believed in, you know, he did his whole, I'm from Scranton, I believe I don't want to make this a criticism of Joe Biden 
type of segment. I want to keep it on Donald Trump. But I think that most people would say that uh, we're up on that situation, that his support for the unions was more rhetorical than it was anything else. And it was tepid at best. I think a lot of people were, it's a weird position for a president to be in. Um, yeah. But I would, I would say that there were probably a lot of people, depending on your political viewpoint, that were unimpressed with Joe Biden's support for unions and unimpressed with his support for the auto workers. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he called for unionization. I'm like looking it up. Yeah. I mean, it was more than they had seen a president do before in regards to unions. I remember that being the rhetoric around it. I'm not, I'm not trying to change the subject. I'm more so saying in response to this, how Trump's saying, if you do this, if you don't vote for me, it'll... Allegedly, that's what he was talking about, be a bloodbath when I feel like maybe the you, the workers didn't get everything they wanted. But under the Biden administration, you had a president who supported unions and the work that they do. Trump what is I'm really saying. mad about this. He says the fake news media, the Democratic <laughs> partners um, <laughs> and the Democratic partners in the destruction of our nation pretended to be shocked at my use of the word bloodbath, even though they fully understood that I was simply referring to imports allowed by crooked Joe Biden, which are killing the automobile industry. The United Auto Workers, uh, but not their le leadership, fully understand what I mean. With the electric car mandate being pushed by Biden, there soon won't be any cars made in the, U the USA unless I'm elected president, in which auto manufacturing will thrive like never before. Uh, all that stuff was in caps. So the rally was actually in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and if you're, you're not going to be able to sell those cars if I get elected. And he said, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building uh, massive factories. My thing is this. Okay. He said, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Right. That, to me, is Trump talking about something other than the specific issue I that he wants to wrap all of this sentiment sure. up into. So he's wrapping the sentiment up into, hey, I was talking about the auto industry and imports and EVs and where electric car batteries are made and how that's affecting the automobile industry here in the United States of America, mm -hmm. which I think it's uh, actually um, a good conversation to have in terms of what manufacturing we need to be doing right here at home and how we can goose automakers into rebuilding a little bit of American manufacturing here. Well, and um, you also have the issue of electric cars. Sure. But, and that's something that, to be honest with you, uh, is a much, much deeper issue than a president can address. Sure. And a, or a prospective president can address uh, at a campaign stop. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a lot of conversation and a lot of talk a conversation about global, globalization, uh, uh, treaty organizations, agreements, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, economic treaty organizations and all that kind of It's just like the whole neoliberal economic structure is going to be under indictment if you have that conversation. I don't know how much any American president really wants to get into a full-on pissing contest with the business community just because it seems like the business community is always going to win that. Uh, but... It seems as if what he said was things are going to be a bloodbath in the country and bad for car <laughs> for, for car makers uh, for the automobile industry if I don't get elected. What do you think Trump thinks his bloodbath consists of? I mean, before you even linked it to it, that there, his team is saying he was talking specifically about the auto industry, when I read bloodbath, I, my mind immediately goes to January 6th. Mm, political violence. Yeah, I see an uprising. I, I see, like, you think that Jan, it was bad with January 6th? We're going to war. I see scenes from that upcoming movie, Civil War, happening. That's I feel like he is he is... He says these things to incite his base, to get them riled up, to get them ready. Stand back and stand by. Like, that's that's what that's giving to me. I think... Did it well, not for you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but... I think that a lot of the people who are quick to uh, defend Donald Trump, and I think it's important to look at these statements in context, because... I believe that Trump and what he represents 
uh, and just the dissonance of his electorate, it's enough on its own without adding anything to it. So if this were a situation where you could look at it and be like, okay, this was taken out of context, I think it's important to be uh, intellectually honest about what he sure. might have said or might have been trying to say or whatever, whatever. Number one, the response to it by the Trump side wasn't quite honest. He wrapped the statement in, up in there about the country that right. was right. And then number two, Trump has a history of, mm -hmm. like you said, threatening um, both directly and in a veiled way, political violence if things don't go his way. Right. Um, like even in some cases where he's talking to people, just to just let you know, if you don't do this, people are going to be very angry. People are going to be very upset. He weaponizes the actions of an increasingly unhinged base. Like they're getting more unhinged. Mm -hmm. Um as a, a reason why people should should give in to his wishes, why people should do what he says. So it's not out of character for Donald Trump to say, hey, if I don't get elected, there's going to be a bloodbath or going to be something like that. He's talked about civil war in the past. These are things that don't seem to be in the far recesses of his mind. These are, in my opinion, tools to be used by him in order to... Uh, influence people to do what he wants them to do, which is vote for him and give him more power. It's like fear-based campaigning, not even in the fear-based way that we get in general political campaigns. Everybody campaigns on fear. If you don't do this, these people are going to take over and do this and this and that. This is directly, hey, I've got my hands on, my finger on the trigger of a very specific gun. And if I don't get the White House, I'll pull that trigger. I mean, yeah, the term bloodbath alone is so extreme and so violent. And to your point, goes hand in hand with him talking about riots, talking about violence and destruction uh, or violence in the streets, talking about death and destruction. Like he's done all these things. And he's basically like, if you don't beware, this is what is to come. Yeah. And so bloodbath, I don't care how you spin it was intentionally used to be extreme. There's nothing un unambiguous about it. Let me ask you a question on the whole Donald Trump situation. I mean, there's nothing ambiguous about it. So we're going to... We're going to now see a lot more Donald Trump uh, for the next six or seven months, whatever it is. Okay. How do you think the media should handle President Trump? Hmm. Are you a person that believes that President Trump should be shielded from a mass media because, or hidden from mass media, or I guess censored from mass media because of the amount of lies and the rhetoric and the whipping up of people that he does? Or do you think that the way to show people who he truly is and influence them and give them the truth of him is to, to 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 show him when he's talking to give them Trump unvarnished and uncensored. What do you think? I mean, it's it's difficult for me to answer either way because the mass media, the people who are watching the mass media are not voting for Trump. That's how I feel. I feel like we're eight years in and dealing with Trump connected to the presidency one way or another. At this point, he has shown us who he is. He's getting increasingly more extreme, in my opinion, and it hasn't deterred his core base. And Republicans have shown us time and time again that they're going to vote based on that he's attached to their party rather than concern over the things that he's saying. I just don't feel like, I don't feel like Trump is gaining attention, like the media covering him. I don't feel like Trump is gaining any voters. And I don't feel like um, by them covering him that he's also going to lose particular voters. I think the people who want to vote Republican are going to vote Republican because it's a one issue for them, or they on the other side are like, well, it's better than Joe Biden because that's how they think. And I think the, the core MAGA base is going to vote for Trump because he's their cult leader. At this point, I don't think in, where you, whether you give him media attention or not, I don't think it's, it, it goes either way. So then I guess I would say then don't because I'm sick of hearing about him. 
Go ahead. I think he should be covered as much as possible. Be, for what? For the purpose of what? Um, the devil is most effective when he's hidden. And but see, and I agree. Like when you can't see it coming. So to me, people don't have as much of a bad taste in their mouth about Donald Trump as they did at a at one particular point because they haven't seen him enough. I don't agree with I'm that. I'm just okay. So look, this is this is my this is my way of looking at it. So people came out in force in 2020 to to vote Donald Trump out of office. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, things are a lot different than what they were then, right? However, people were sick of him. The number one reason Joe Biden was able to win in 2020 is because people were sick of Donald Trump. Sure. And they were sick of him from a cultural perspective as much as they were sick of him from a policy perspective. He was on the news every single day saying absurd things regarding COVID, saying drink Lysol, saying hit it with a bright, intense light, saying he knows more about science than many other people, right? right? And particularly in that point, in the face of such a real and grave threat, people looked and they said, hey, we can't have this motherfucker running the country. It just didn't seem like it was taken seriously. It didn't seem like it was taken uh, scientifically seriously. And they were like, you know what? This is an inflection point where we need different leadership. Not even better leadership. Not even competent leadership. Well, definitely better leadership. But we need, we need different leadership. Trump walking over with the Bible in D.C. Upside down. Upside down. After the, all of these things made people go, mm, this is not the guy. This is sure. embarrassing. And this is dangerous. And I think part of the resurgence of Donald Trump as being a viable mainstream candidate is the p- fact that people don't remember how much of an idiot he is. And I think shielding him from that actually helps propagate the narrative that things were just normal when Donald Trump was the president, right? I think it's important to fact check Donald Trump. I agree with that. I think it's important to fact check Donald Trump not only in real time, but after he is done speaking. That burden is on the news media. It's on the news media to be up to the task to A, standing up to him and to people that support him, and B, having the uh, the appropriate knowledge to counter some of the untrue things that he would say. And now we know that there's a penalty to be pay, paid for that, right? With the entire Dominion lawsuit that Fox was under, you lie and you put the wrong people in the crosshairs, you'll have to pay for it. But I just don't think you gain anything by shielding him from scrutiny. So I understand your point. And like I said, I can see it both ways. I guess for me is... I'm sorry. I'm allergic to something in here, guys. There's something in here that I'm allergic to. I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm allergic to something in the studio. It's a thing. It's just that the way you blow your nose is just like talking about extreme. It's just extreme. The noise, I don't know. It was just, it was excessive. Sorry. Actually, you should be apologizing to I'm me. I'm sorry. I <laughs> Anyways, there's no like, excuse me, I'm about to blow my nose. It just comes. All right. Um, my issue with the mainstream media is that they become obsessed over the way that they report on Trump. I agree with you. When Trump makes extreme comments about a bloodbath or he's on, you know, um, what's Truth Social saying his, you know, saying things that are lies or, or of that nature, I, I think that, yes, you should discuss them. There should be articles written about them. But as far as what happens to me is like, I, I get frustrated when I turn on mainstream media and it's like, we're talking about something so small when it comes to Trump. And I feel like sometimes he overtakes mainstream media to the point where we're hearing more about 
him and what he's doing and like taking the story and the sub parts of it and talking about it every single day to where we're not even talking about the other side of it. We talk more about all the things that Trump is doing and sometimes we're not highlighting the other side of it. That's where I guess I feel like we need to dial back. So I'm not saying don't cover Trump. I'm just saying let's not become obsessed with it like we have before in election years. Fair point. I will say this. I don't think you win this election on either side with your diehards. Sure. I don't think you win very many elections with your diehards. And we should say, just in fairness, um, that Trump and the Trump portion of the Republican Party has been losing elections here pretty consistently for the last uh, four four years. Um, So there's that. So apparently people haven't lost their total disdain for Donald Trump. But uh, his opponent is vulnerable. Mm. The ongoing massacre in Gaza makes his opponent vulnerable. The, uh, not unwillingness, but the, it seems as if sometimes Joe Biden, besides the State of the Union, is incapable of messaging in an energetic way to his base, which makes them less energetic about coming out. Mm -hmm. But Donald Trump, regardless of how you, or what you think of him, inspires emotion in people, either intense uh, love or intense hate. And I do think that there are people at the margins wondering whether or not they're going to participate in the election that are probably motivated uh, by him to vote him out. And that will increase to me the more that they understand who he is. I think the best thing, the best thing for uh, anyone who is against Trump or anti-MAGA is to see as much of him as possible. Is that, is the message getting to them though? Well, it did in 2020. And it seems to have... I don't know if it got to them or if it just got to other, the people who... It got to them. They, they voted. And so, well, like, it, it, obviously, it's different than it was then. Sure. But, you know, once again, I'm just not in, and we can move on to, to, to Vice President Pence and we will get that audio ready. I'm just not one of these people that believe that the best way to deal with the problem is to ignore it. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I, it's the obsession. You, you can admit that there was an obsession. Uh, maybe that's too strong of a word, but it was no, overkill I, no, I when mean, it came to covering Trump. I agree with you. Don't ignore the problem, right? Right. I think that's what we did in 2016. Well, I, I think, think we ignored. We didn't take it seriously. Ah, this is just him. There's no way this guy is going to make it this far. And step by step, he kept getting there. So I think we've learned our lesson from that. So I will agree with you. We should not ignore it, but we shouldn't just be, it shouldn't be all consuming. So this is what I'll say. Uh, the media and we really will move on to this, the media doesn't have the responsibility to destroy or minimize Donald Trump. The media has a responsibility to the truth. Mm -hmm. So the truth. So it's very simple. Donald Trump is running for president. He is the presumptive, basically he is the GOP nominee for president, right? Uh, So he's running for president. Boom. You have to, that person is a news story, without a doubt. When they say, when they, when they lie, give the truth. That's it. When they lie, give the truth. The difference between now and then was that Trump was so good for ratings yeah. that every little thing that he said was yeah. covered ad nauseum. Every little thing that he did was covered as nause- ad nauseum. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the fact checking, both on the spot and after he was done talking, took a back seat. Sure. to inundating us with the, what Donald Trump was saying at all times. Now, I mean, you know, he went on there and he, he when he was talking in that same speech, he said that some of the people that were coming up from the southern border weren't human. Hmm. He said that they were animals. Well, if you're going to talk about the fact that he said that, I think it's important to put a human being that understands the situation at the southern border on to let Americans know that we're that no matter how you feel about what's going on down there, we are talking about human beings, right. no matter what he says. Um, I think 
contextualizing what he's what he does is more important than like hiding him from America because we're going to get a lot a lot a lot of Donald Trump and it's important that we get that in a way that's responsible mm-hmm. all right Pence real quick said he is not going to endorse Donald Trump uh, give us the audio come as no surprise that I will not be endorsing Donald Trump this year but look I, I'm incredibly proud of the record of our administration. It was a conservative record that made America more prosperous, more secure. But uh, that being said, during my presidential campaign, I made it clear that there were profound differences uh, between me and and President Trump on a range of issues. Uh, And and not just uh, our difference on my constitutional duties that I exercised on January the 6th. Donald Trump is pursuing and articulating an agenda that is at odds with the conservative agenda that that we governed on during our four years. And that's why I cannot in good conscience uh, endorse Donald Trump. Okay, so he's done. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I mean... I mean, we kind of already knew that. Yeah, he's finished. Uh, That's a death rattle from the political career of of Mike Pence. I just don't have very much respect for people who kissed the ring and then try to vomit back up the remnants of the ring that they kissed later on. But he's not. And this is why I don't have respect for him. Okay. In one sense, it's like he is devoting himself not just to to his beliefs rather than saying, I'm just going to vote for the Republican nominee because that's the party that I belong to. All right, cool. Give you credit for that. Maybe you'll be able to influence some other people to speak out who would typically vote Republican and might say, hey, I don't want this guy in office. You know, there was a second people thought Mitch McConnell, not really, but, you know, once Nikki Haley was out, he endorsed him as well because he said he's there was never a world where he would not vote for the Republican nominee. So I will give Pence at least that. But his reasoning for not voting for Donald Trump has nothing to do with the fact that he threatened his life and his family's life, that he encouraged other people to hang him, that he, or the the people that he was inciting wanted to hang him, um, that the fact that he wanted him to go against the Constitution and, you know, like come up with more votes, that he didn't want him to certify the votes, that like none of those are reasons as to why he's not voting for him or any of the outrageous things that Trump's done. It's because of abortion. And it's because of TikTok. Yeah. Well, that's look. so it's like you're not a hero here. You're not even the, the the main reasons why Trump should not be in office don't even phase you. It's low stakes. He's not. <laughs> like, I mean, he's not uh, at least. I mean, for guys like Mitch McConnell and other people, I mean, Mitch McConnell won't be uh, in the Senate for too much longer. But it, it's low stakes for Pence to do this. It's uh, it, it doesn't really matter. He won't. He's not a viable. A political figure in America anymore. There's not an election to win. Uh, it, it's it's a low stakes thing for him to say. Um, some people will be all into it, whatever, whatever. Uh, I, you know, I'm giving credit for what he exactly. was. He was he was his main lieutenant in the whole fucking thing. Right. So he should have been leading this anti maga charge. And says for a he's long time. proud of what they did during their administration. Like, sure he is. Huh? I mean, Pence. Okay, B- Bill Maher. This is all you. All yes. me? This is you. This is you. I'm. You brought this topic up. I'm, I want to hear your take on it first. Uh, Bill Maher defended Biden's record, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners will listen to, <laughs> uh, and slammed people obsessed with mental health. Give us the audio. And finally, new rule, being obsessed with your mental health is bad for your mental health. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot lately about a puzzle many are struggling with. Why are Biden's approval ratings so low when things are generally pretty good? Now, of course, there are problems. America's a big place. But wages are rising. Unemployment is negligible. The stock market is soaring. We somehow brushed off both the Trump presidency and the pandemic. Yes, inflation persists for a lot of things. But, you know, an actual good, nice-sized TV now costs 60 bucks. Who gets credit for that? We've got next day shipping, stuffed crust pizza, legal weed, GPS, and porn on the phone. (laughs) Cheer the fuck up. Stop acting like life in America in 2024 is unbearable. 
Biden's ratings are in the toilet, not because he's doing such a bad job, but because a lot of Americans like to live with their head in the toilet. Also, and don't get mad at me, I'm just citing statistics, but the people who really shouldn't be that bummed out but are acting like it anyway are exactly who you think, white women. <laughs> An estimated 35% of whom are on antidepressants, although in their defense, have you seen the prices at Lululemon? But every bad feeling isn't a disease, and Americans really need to stop pathologizing everything. Okay, um, curious, why is this, why did you say that this is all me? Well, you brought it up, and okay. I'm, I'm, I, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about it, that he did compliment the Biden administration, uh -huh. or his take on mental health, which basically is like, suck it up, get over it. And I know that, you know, you've been open on this podcast before with, mental health and what you've gone through. So I didn't know if this like struck a nerve with you or, you know, you agreed with him. So there are two different things that work here for me. One is uh, the first part of it, which is people don't realize the rate at which the country is improving. That's actually true. Uh, there are all kinds of studies on this. Uh, um, but I think the reason why that is, is because of images and pictures and things that they're inundated with. Like, I, I, I watch these, I watch The Hill, right? And Robbie Suave, Brianna Joy Gray on The Hill, it's great fun to watch. They do a great job. But there was this one particular back and forth between them where Brianna was talking about crime going down. There are cities in America right now that are absolutely on fire. And I do not mean to single out cities, but I have to be honest about the fact that Washington, D.C. right now and Philadelphia right now are pretty bad in terms of crime rates that are going on there. But in a lot of other Ameri major American cities, crime is getting close to returning to pre-pandemic levels. Um, and if not getting close to returning there, it's trending towards that. We have to remember that pre-pandemic, America was as safe as it had ever been. We had Cerise Castle on here, and when she talked about the fact, when she talked about crime, she talked about the fact that 2018, 2019, these are some of the safest years on record. So no matter what they tell you, no matter what mascot they use, whether it be Chicago, Jacksonville, any other place like that, <clears throat> crime overall was down. It had been coming down in America for a long time. There are a lot of reasons why. A lot of reasons why. I want everybody to look into, I've talked about this before. I want everyone to look into the prevalence of lead in our environment. It's just, it's, it's just the prevalence of lead in our environment and how crime rates changed once we got the lead out of some of these places, all right? It was, it was thinning out these kids' brains and driving them crazy. All kinds of things have, have, have led to that reduction in crime. Um, but in this back and forth between Brianna and Robbie, she mentions that crime rates are going down. And Robbie says, well, if crime rates are going down, why am I seeing videos all over the place of groups of teens going into stores, smashing and grabbing and then running out. So the question is not about whether or not crime is actually going down. The question is about whether or not someone like Robbie Suave feels like crime is going down. It's not about whether or not you are safe. It's whether or not you feel safe. And it doesn't take a crime happening every single day, two or three times a day, to make you feel unsafe the emotional impact of a crime makes you feel unsafe. If your church is the victim of a crime, if a place that is typically not the victim of a crime is the victim of a crime. I remember a guy got shot at El Pastayo in Beverly Hills and people acted like the world was coming to an end when stuff like that happens just literally 10 miles south all the time, right? Um, and people were like, oh my God, if it's coming to Beverly Hills, it's not safe in Beverly Hills anymore. So all of those things and your access to that type of imagery, that affects the way you view whether or not you're safe or what crime actually is. How could you feel that 
property theft is going down if you see ki- kids running into the Apple store and ripping all the iPhones off. Y- your brain, your eyes are telling you that's not true. Yet it is. So I get what he's saying there. The mental health component is challenging for me because when someone says, hey, just cheer up, my answer is always, how? Right. And I'm not going to get all deep into this, but like, for a guy like Bill Maher, I'm sure that he has a good life where nothing really bothers him. Although, he did just fire his agency Oh yeah, because he didn't get invited to a Hollywood party. Right. So, obviously, Bill Maher is just like the rest of us. Sure. And he gets bothered by things. Insipid things, one might say. Right. So, I'm looking back to like a time where I very real, where I, I had a real life suicidal ideation to where I'm, I'm, I was rescued by humor. Like I'm laying down and I have a shotgun and the shotgun was bought uh, because I wanted to protect my home. And I'm just literally, I'm looking down and I'm like, I can say for 100% certain that I'm never going to feel good again. Like, I have that intellectual thought that this is now my life. That I will wake up in the morning at 5.30, 5.45, because I'm really not getting good sleep. And then I would drive out to the beach and I would walk up and down the beach or walk up and down the streets of LA and cry until about noon. Cry until noon. Like, literally, cry till my eyes were swollen up. Cry till, like, ask different people. Ask, people saw me. Lil Rail one time, shout out to Lil Rail, saw me walking up and down uh, uh, La Cienega at like seven in the morning. Tiffany Haddish like drove, like people were going to work and doing stuff and they, and people would stop and be like, Van, what's up? <laughs> like what, like, what, like what you're doing? I'm just walking around just trying to get some sun, trying to get, just, just crying. Um, until about one where I would level out for a little bit. I'd have maybe two decent hours. And then I knew that I was going to have to try to sleep. And then I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep. And so then that would make me anxious. And then I would wake up and do all of this again. So I'm laying down one morning. I'm waking up one morning. And I'm like, this is just life. I can't see a way out of this. There's no possible way that you could feel this way and then one day feel better. And I go, like, the shotgun is right there. Because this is torturous. This is like, this is painful. Like the air is heavy. Like I can't see. Like I'm, it's, 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 I don't feel anything. Um, and so I'm, uh, and I laugh. And the reason why, and, and, and I laugh because in my brain, I go, that was real. It wasn't, I wasn't thinking it, it, the feeling that I was in, it superseded everything else. It superseded my fear of death. Mm. It superseded my fear of what my family would do after I was gone. Like, all of that. Like, I was in pain. And once I actually had the thought and the thought was real, and, and I realized that I really felt that way, um, I, I sat up and I laughed. I'm like, I need help. I got to do something. Called my therapist. My therapist was like, and shout out to Nick. Nick May. I always talk about Nick, my partner Nick, and what a great guy Nick is. Called my therapist and my therapist was like, uh, how much ammo do you have for the gun? I was like, I got about 400 rounds. She was like, give it to somebody. And so Nick, I said, hey Nick, can I come drop 400 rounds of shotgun ammo off at your house? And he was like, yeah. By the way, he still has it. Um, but I have ammo for my okay. other weapons. But, but... <laughs> you also told this audience, remember, you were getting... Right. right. <laughs> you um, but, and so, when guys like Bill Maher say what he says, right, first of all, he's connecting two things that I don't think are connectable. I, I agree with what he said about people not understanding the actual stakes and the actual 
situation in America right now, but I think that has a lot to do more with how we get information and what images and and uh, social media does to us. Narratives are so important right now, which is why you need to have corrective narratives all the time. You need someone that says, hey, that's a scary situation, but just to let you know, that's not happening as much as you think that it's happening. Mm -hmm. Like, not because... Just because something can happen or does happen doesn't mean that it's happening all the time, right? If that were the case, people would never get on planes. People would never take boats out. People would never do all of this. There's an expectation that goes along with some of that stuff. Not a complete, complete elimination of risk, but the expectation that it's generally safe. And weaponizing fear is, is saying you're not generally safe. It's saying because of somebody's policies or because of something else that's happening, you're not generally safe. And you are. You're generally safe. You are. And you're getting safer. Yeah. And your things are, the economy is turning. It's getting generally better. Now, that might not be affecting you right now the way that it should be because of other factors. But there's data. It's generally getting better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, as far as you and whether or not you're going to generally get it, get better, it's irresponsible of somebody to go on their platform and say, hey, cheer the fuck up and not tell you how. It's irresponsible for somebody to go on their platform and say, you're making it up in your mind and not tell you why. Mm -hmm. It's belittling. It makes it easier to take the other way out. Well, Bill Maher and his audience of clapping fucking imbeciles mm -hmm. says, hey, you guys are over uh, indexing. You guys are talking too much about how bad you're feeling. Well, I mean, the reality is things are a little different now, Bill. We get, like, confronted with catastrophe every single day. Yeah. We get images of dead kids every single day. We get images of yeah, sure, Pornhub is on your phone, but right after the girl twerking, there's a dead kid. And right after that dead kid, there's somebody getting shot, and then there's Donald Trump, then there's the bloodbath, and then there's this, and then there's that, and then there's this, and then there's that. So if you want us to feel better, tell us how. And there is a how. There was a how for me. That how was I called somebody and I asked for help. That person told me, number one, something to do to take myself out of harm's way. Then that person, Coley Williams, my therapist at the time, Coley Williams, she gave me tools to feel better. And when I started feeling better, I didn't even realize it. And the reason why I didn't realize it is because I was too focused on getting better. Medication was a part of that. Mm -hmm. Like Coley once told me, she's like, as soon as you get up, she's like, what makes you, what makes you feel okay? I'm like, I, I feel pretty okay when I'm laying in a hammock. Okay, as soon as you wake up, go lay in a hammock. Go lay in a hammock, meditate two or three times a day, breathing, all of this stuff. And after I did it for a while, I didn't even realize I was doing it. I remember one day I was just in a place having fun. Like you guys can go back and look at old like clips from this podcast where my beard is grown out, where my mustache is all fucked up, where my eyes look sunken in. When all of this stuff is happening, like, I was going fucking through it. And then one day, we're somewhere, and I'm feeling better. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, things don't feel as bad. I'm feeling better. Then I start playing basketball again. Then I start lifting weights again. Then I start, then, and then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm coming back to life. But I did, I had myself... I did an intake. Six hours of therapy, th therapy a day cost me $10,000. Like all of these things that I had access to, other people don't. Right. Like I had to literally almost like commit myself to where I'm doing somatic therapy. I'm doing uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. I'm doing um, general therapy. I'm doing all of this stuff. Like I'm doing therapy three times a day, every day for six weeks. So when someone says something like this, the reason why it's so destructive to me is because either you ain't been there or you ain't been there in a while. 
and to and and to belittle somebody that's in that position when all they want to do is believe that it's possible to feel better. Mm-hmm. It's not not that they not they don't want to just get but they want to believe that it's possible to feel better. Even the the belief that it's possible. Man, me and Kalika were walking Bozeman one time, and Bozeman was a puppy. So every single, he would walk a little while, and then he would stop. He would walk a little while to stop. We were trying to get him to walk further. He would walk a little while, and he would stop. He would walk a little while, and he'd stop. Like, it, we're walking down the street, and we're getting, and the dog would stop. The dog would stop. I burst into tears. Like, I, I walked to the park crying. She doesn't know what to do. He's looking at me like, what's wrong with that? It's, it's fucked up. So, with a platform that big coming out and saying, hey, just, like, suck it the fuck up, I tried. I really did. Like, I, I, I tried. I, like, I, I tried, man. I tried to be like, oh, it's going to go away, but whatever. I tried. I, I tried, man. Like, I, I, I don't know what to say. Like, I did, like, I really tried. I tried to just be like, okay, we're just going to sit down and watch a movie, whatever, whatever. Man, I tried everything. I tried to, I tried. Nothing worked except for a set of behaviors that got me out of it. Yeah. And I was lucky because I had some money to, 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 to put into that and some insurance. So I don't know, Bill. It's, it's a, that's a, that's a tough one for me. Yeah. This is why I wanted you to talk about it. Why? So I could rant? No, because it res, it, I am not as connected to it as you are. Right. And I knew that you could speak to it in a way that I couldn't. And I knew that I'm sure it helps somebody who's listening to this podcast. And I wouldn't want to take away. It, it, it didn't need my voice. It needed yours. Oh, you want to talk about Don Lemon? No, because I really want to bring on Justin. And I talked to him about this. Okay. He had a really good take as to why he could speak to his own personal Is Justin with a white guy? No, he's not dating anybody. Okay. But he... It made a lot of sense. So give me a so we're talking about the fact that I brought up the black gay man with white man dynamic. You get pushback from that? No. Okay. I didn't get pushback. I think that's also because we really didn't do like a whole segment on it. What I got, at least for right now, was outreach from a lot of black gay men who wanted us to have this conversation. Did they give you a reason? No, they didn't. Okay. They I mean, some of them wanted to come on and talk about what they thought the reason was. But I don't know that it's a big deal. It's like whatever, but it is. It's interesting what Justin's explanation to me was interesting. What did he I say? I never thought of it. I don't want to say it for him. I just didn't think of it that way. It, it dealt with things he dealt with growing up. Um, it dealt with, again, I don't want to take away his story. So I guess my- But it dealt with like his own trauma. Uh-huh. And, so, and, and he made some kind of point about like, I don't want to deal with the same trauma sometimes. But and see, but see, my point is this, and just to stay there, and I, I, I'll, I'll wait till he gets on there. But that's what niggas that fuck with white girls say. But you know what? They like they, they say, but they they say the. Do ex- they say that? Yes, they do. They they don't. They, sometimes they don't say it in front of y'all, but in these conversations, they'll be like, they will say, "Man." All of that hurt and that pain and that and that and that for being black. Yeah, for That's being what black. They're saying? Yeah, for being black. For being like all of that hurt. See, look, look how you're reacting. See what I'm saying? Look how you react. I bet you didn't react like when Justin said it like that. I didn't. See, look how look <laughs> look look. And by the way, that wasn't that. I guess for me, as somebody who was in an interracial relationship, I never thought of man, like he has a different journey than me, or we don't. That that was never my reason for wanting for attraction or wanting to date somebody who was outside of my race. So I just, I, I'm one of those people who's like, I feel like we understand each other better and there's something beautiful in that. I come from that school of thought more than I'm like, oh, uh, you got, we, we both dealing with issues so, for being black. That's like never crosses my mind. Let me tell you what, let, let me tell you what I've heard from these types. Of black men. Of black men. Well, me, cis black men. Yeah. Yeah, cis, like, cis black men. Let me tell you what I've heard. What I've heard was, you get money. Money is freedom. 
you get you and this is not this is from guys who intentionally do this. They intentionally they intentionally like to be around white ladies. They're like, "Yo, you get money, you get this, and money is freedom and you're around people who have never ever looked at themselves as like less than before." Everything that comes is a little. So full of shit. Listen, I'm telling you, they say everything. I don't believe hold on, any of y'all on, that say that. They say every. That they say bullshit. everything comes a little easier. Ooh. They say they say her family got money. They say like all of that stuff is not things. You talking to some ignorant ass people? Now see, now here's the deal. So I agree, right? And so and so and so when I'm having these conversations, I'm like, my nigga, you like white girls? It's okay. Just say it. Just yeah. say it. But look at your reaction to what they're saying as it relates to Justin. It's a totally different reason. I just gave you one thing. He had some he had some deeper issues that that's but why I'm like, all of these I want... people got deeper issues no. about why whiteness that's, means Oh, because uh, they uh, no, on, none about... of Justin's things were they have it easier. No, 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 they no, no, come no, no. Money. no, no, no. But look, but look, what 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 these guys are actually saying is that whiteness is a release from trauma. I do which is wild to me because being in an interracial relationship uh, brings its own set of drama. Like it brings its own set of hate. You have to deal with totally look, different I, issues. I, I, and if you have children, that's a whole other I, issue. Rachel, you so don't understand. I agree with you. For more. I'm talking to these ignorant ass folks that you talk to. You dealing with you're dealing with more drama in a different it's like it opens up a whole new door for you. So what the fuck are you talking about? In my opinion, those guys who particularly only date women who are not, who don't look like them, are doing it because they feel like, as you said, they get they get to a certain level, maybe in their career, maybe with money, and they feel like when they get that type of woman, it's a trophy. See, I think that's too simplistic. I don't. So I think I, they I think, think that I, they have that that's what they deserve. I think they think that, I think that, that they, they could never get it before. So it's a prize. I do think that. I think that and that's I'm too only simplistic. People who specifically date that, not people who date everybody. I'm talking about people who only date people who don't look like them. I think a lot of the reasons that they do that, first of all, all of these things are uh, like steeped to me in self-hatred. But uh, but a lot of a lot of the reasons why they do that is because they see whiteness as being less traumatic and a conduit to an American sense of freedom and an American experience that blackness is not. Sure. And so and so I'm interested to know the parallels in that, because even if even I, I will just wait till he comes on, because even because it's really not that different. It, well, it, let him say it. Let, let him let, say it. Let, let him say it. But I will say, you, I understand what you mean about the way those type of men view whiteness. But the moment you attach your blackness to it, it becomes something different. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I said it opens up a whole nother door as you become this interracial couple. They view whiteness as one thing and they view blackness as something different. The moment the two of you come together... It brings something else out. Yeah, but but niggas like that, they don't care. I think people that care, I think people that care about it, I think they, I think people that care about it aren't the type of people that even have these mentalities because the people that care about it, you're not even gonna, niggas like that don't care. They no, go. They don't. They don't. Yeah. They don't. They really don't. Yeah, that's, why, can- that's why I can't take the excuse of, oh, well, this is why I'm doing it. No, you don't care. This is what you want. This is all you it's, want. But see, and, and go. But go, do you understand, though? No, do you understand, though, no, Rach? how it's an excuse in one point and a reason for somebody else. It's like, it, it's like, it, it's like. It, I think both can be true. I think you're, I think there's a double standard here for you. Well, I'm not saying, oh, because black women. No, not black uh, women. I don't, look, black women go out there and get your happiness. It's interesting. But go out there and get, go out, go, go out there and get your happiness, right? Go out there and get your, I'm not talking about that. All I'm saying is, when you hear these, when you when you when you hear some of these guys talk, because I, I I'm the type of nigga that ask, be like, yo, man, because you like to stir the pot. I be like, I'm the type of nigga that ask, like, bro, you really don't, like, yeah. But let me tell you something, bro. It wasn't until I started making a little bit of money because of this, because of that, because blah 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 blah, and all of this. It's just easier. It's just this. It's just that. And I'm like, oh, so you think that whiteness is some kind of elevator into this American experience that you can't have with a black woman? 
And it, and it's, and so that to me is very profound because when you say that, that's so dehumanizing and debilitates, debilitating to black women that I'm like, there's a, there's a real sort of issue there. And if somebody else says the same thing, I've had all of this different, t- I know it's not a quite one-to-one, but right. I, it, but it's, it's, it's sort of similar to me. I would like you to implement one of these dudes into the playbook. No, nah, hell no. I, 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 I want to meet one. You want to meet? Okay. I want to meet one. But see, I'll tell you something else. They're not going to look at you the same. I know. I've heard this before, and I hate that. I like. I, I I've heard that back all the way going they're, back they're to not, college, and I have a huge issue with they're that. They're not going to well. look at you the same. I have a huge issue with that. These these people are racist, and they don't even know. It. I've had to, these conversations are the fun conversations. These are these are conversations to where I'm like, look, it don't matter if you if you see a white woman and you like to cut of her jib, and then you date her. Hey, it happens, man. Look, it happens. Like it, it, it it's a thing. But if you're telling me that there's a conscious effort to exclude black women from some type of social and emotional circle that you've created for all of these reasons, I think that's worth investigating. Investigating. It is. Is this a matter for the BBI? Oh my God. You guys don't understand. Did I tell you the BBI closed the case? Yes, you did. <laughs> we have to talk about Pornhub. I thought you didn't want to talk about Pornhub. I think it's important to talk about it. <laughs> We're going to break down Biden's budget proposal on the next on podcast. Thursday? Yeah. Good. Um, this came across my desk, Pornhub, because I had a friend reach out to me and demanded that we talk about it on the podcast. He was very upset, said he had came home from a long day of work and wanted to, you know, light up a blunt, and hurt it and have hurt a it. drink and just relax. And so he logged on to Pornhub and saw that it is no longer he no longer has access to it in the state of Texas. Well, first of all, your friend needs to step his game up. <laughs> because Pornhub has gone the way of the dodo bird in terms of being relevant for porn users for a while now. Oh, really? So people don't yeah. use Pornhub? They do. Oh. But what I'm saying is that I can tell that he's still living in the old ages. <laughs> I'm out of it. But it, look, it, Pornhub and other affiliated websites have blocked access to users in Texas amid a legal battle with the Lone Star State. But look, this is what happened. Uh, so you have to have age verification measures to ensure adults only eight, over 18 are able to see the site. Now look, what, what this means is, this is not just saying, because sites for a long time have said, hey, are you 18 or not? Right. And then you would say, yeah. You put your birthday in, like a liquor site does the same thing. Right. And then they say, hey, okay, cool. And in, in the you in the old days, it would be like, hey, are you over 18? Yes or no? And then if you said no, it would be funny. The site would send you to Disney.com. Really? Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> like back in the day, like if you said no, I wasn't 18, the site would send you to Disney.com <laughs> or they would send you to Yahoo That's or funny. something. But it was sometimes it would be funny the sites that they would send you to if um if you said no. Um, which was actually probably pretty good for Disney because those are just kind of clicks that they're getting based sure. off like a joke or whatever. But now this new age verification software, I wish I would have thought of this, is actually like based upon real shit. Like you got to go in there and you got to type your, uh, you got to put your driver's license information in or put your credit card information in. It's actually real age verification software mm-hmm. by a third party site that is really going to determine whether or not the person that is doing this right now is 18 or not. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit more advanced. They, thought they already have this in Louisiana. Oh, you know that? Yeah, they've had it for some time. Yeah. All right. Continue to, continue to cast aspersions. I've changed. I believe you. Um, not like, I mean, okay, so listen. What really happened was I got out of the life. <laughs> to it. It's the life. <laughs> there was a porn life. I, was, I got out of the life. You were an addict. It's okay. I'm not saying that, you know, at the time, but it, it's like... You got out of the life. But out of the life. But you're still in the know. I'm in the know. Okay. But I'm out of the life. The life was... I couldn't even be as successful as I am right now if I was still in the Jeez. life. It was taking too much time. Spoken like an addict. Um, <laughs> it's just all of these pejorative terms. People have different types of personalities. But look, uh, so this message was displayed Thursday to users with internet addresses in Texas on Pornhub. Like, there's ways to get around this. Like, you can get like a, <laughs> See what I mean? What, in the know. 
no. Wait, 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 wait. Now, if you got like a VPN. Yes. Did you see what happened in Texas with the VPN? No, what happened? It was the most, it was, had been the most searched in the state of Texas after Pornhub dismantled right. in Texas. So people are trying to use these virtual private networks to, to circumvent this and, and get access to their porn. Yeah, if you get it. But the thing is, to me, if you're going to go it's through of all of the trouble in getting the VPN, why not just put your name in the age verification thing? Because people don't want them to have their data. That's true. So that's the thing. So people are going, hey, this is just another way to data farm and to get all of people's information. Yes, imagine if this is released. While they're trying it, right. If somebody cracks the site or something like that. Uh, look, I, look, I, I don't really know what the deal is. Pornhub had to disable in Texas. They did it because they felt like this, this age requirement verification was too restrictive. They felt like it was taking away freedom of expression and it's going against content creation and some other points that they made, but they feel like it goes too far. They said they're down with age verification as far as saying, type in your birthday, are you over the age of 18? But the measures that Texas has in place, I guess with the license and whatever else you, information you have to enter, they, so, they say feel like jeopardizes the um, rights of the user. So they're appealing the case. You might make it to the Supreme Court. So here's the thing with Pornhub. Pornhub That's has right. actually, in its past, fought against a lot of political and cultural adversaries. Pornhub used to be different. Now, to post videos on Pornhub, you pretty much have to be a, a verified Pornhub user. It didn't, oh, amateurs could do it? Anybody could upload before? To yeah. Man, I'm not as in the know. You're lying. No, I'm not. I really didn't know that. I do not believe that this is, in fact, true, that you don't know. Like there used I didn't to, know anybody could upload. I did not it know It used that. to be you made a Pornhub site. It was much more akin to a regular tube site. And uh, you, you would go and do your thing. Um, and it would be like whatever. There were a couple of different organizations that, and these are both mainly religious organizations that were able to take aim at Pornhub using different types of uh, of um of issues as cudgels. They were able to say, "Hey." Pornhub supports sex trafficking. Pornhub supports as the, the like uh, minors right. being on there, and they were able to make a case to credit card companies that at different banks that if you support Pornhub, you support all of these things. Pornhub then had no choice because if they lose credit card companies, if they lose, um. Uh, uh, banks that are willing to like facilitate transactions on Pornhub, they have no, they can't, they can't be viable. They can't make money. Mm -hmm. They had no choice but to delete millions of videos wow. by unverified Pornhub uh, 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 creators, and only keep Pornhub verified accounts as people who could upload videos, which completely changed the site and made the site a, a, more of a conduit to mainstream porn. Right, because now if you're verified, that means you're not just somebody who's just uploading your fuck blit flicks on Pornhub and making some money. Now you're probably somebody that's a little bit more of a professional in the business, and a little bit more of uh, uh, of somebody who does this like all the time. It's not like just a tube site where people are uploading stuff and uploading other content from other places and all of that stuff. And that changed it. And now the second war on Pornhub is what people are saying is this type of software. This type of software that through the difficulty of actually registering yourself or giving your data deters people from actually wanting to go on Pornhub and then cripples Pornhub and cripples sites like Pornhub. But make no mistake about it. This is political. Oh, sure. This, this is not as much about what goes on on Pornhub as it is about what people, some people deem as decency. The interesting thing about the issue is I think we would all agree 
that there is porn on the internet that is way too easily accessed. Twitter. Right. I think we would all agree that that is uh, an actual concern. The question is, what do you do about it? Right. The, how do you how do you litigate that? Like, what what do you what do you do about that? How do you legislate that? How do you get involved to where you make it harder for people that shouldn't be looking at porn to look at porn when the computer is such a digital conduit to whatever it is that you want. You scare people like what they're doing right now. This isn't about that, though, to me. This isn't about that. This is about religious-based politics. This is about well, it is, for the sure. politics. Because a lot of these, these companies, and I don't want to, you know, a lot of these companies that have done this in the past, these were companies that were in lockstep with the religious right. And this stuff, it's almost like the same thing with the, the abortion issue in a way. You, may, you can frame the issue around freedom. You can frame the issue around privacy. But what the, what the issue really is at its core for most people that are really soldiers in it, it's a philosophical issue. Mm-hmm. And this one is one too. These people think porn are bad, is, is bad and they don't want people to have access to it. And so what they want to do is make it as hard for you to have access to pornography yeah. as it can be. You know what I mean? And so that's the deal. Now Pornhub has gone to Texas. How many people live in Texas? I don't know. Millions. Probably like, t- how many, what's the population of Texas? Look that up, Ashley. How many, how many, but like how many people live there? A lot of people. Thank God you got out when you did. You think I should come back in and you think I should lend my voice? No, I don't. To saving Pornhub? No, I think you're fine. You do you no. think this is a crusade for me? I don't. Maybe this is the way back in is to save who's going to save Pornhub? You got your hat on. This is me. You got your hat on. And it's Texas. I could be wanker Texas Ranger. Wanker Texas Ranger. Yeah. That's me saving porn. That's actually a good porn parody. Wanker Texas Ranger. Get on it. Get on it. Get on what? <laughs> Get on what? Get on what? Um, but look, actually, this is an interesting topic to talk about. And I would like to get, because these there are people from these organizations that are around. I would like to facilitate facilitate a debate. I want to do a higher learning debate series. Well, isn't this a full circle moment? Seeing how we have discussed porn quite a bit, more than I would like to on this podcast. What what, what makes you so uncomfortable about it? No, I'm not uncomfortable. Let you tell it. I, I'm well versed in it. You why, think I'm lying. Why? I know that you are. Why? No, you why, why? Why does talking about porn make you so uncomfortable? It does not make... I'm the one who brought up this topic. Rachel, do me a favor. Does it make you want me to log on to Pornhub right now? Nope. Uh, because it's gonna say, welcome back, Rachel. <laughs> but, <laughs> but do me a favor. Do me a favor. Name five porn stars. I can't. Like, I can't even begin to try. Can you, you give me one to like you can't name five porn stars? Like, I'm I'm really in my mind trying to think of. Think, come on, Rachel. Five. I don't know. How many porn stars can the room name? I do. I really, and I'm not trying to be funny. I would. You guys are fucking lying. I named Adam Twenty Two and Lena the Plug because that weird Bachelor series on YouTube oh, was hilarious. Oh. Okay, so Adam, Adam Twenty Two and Lena the Plug. You're gonna okay. name them. That was a good one. Okay, that, so, that was so mine. name. So five. You guys can't name five porn stars. Read. What do you say? Is it Riley Reed? Riley Reed, I know what's so. up. <laughs> Riley <laughs> Reed, that's what you want. Like. Oh my. Who's the, who's the girl that um that like left porn? She was like such a big name. Sasha Gray. No. Mi- yeah, that's Mia the one I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, Mia Khalifa. Khalifa. There we go. Oh, Mia oh Khalifa. damn. I could have said Khalifa. Mia Khalifa. Mia Khalifa. Okay, keep going. I know you got because you no, know, you know why we're doing this? We're doing this because all of y'all are fronting. No, I swear to you. All of y'all are fronting, and it's very upsetting because just be yourself, man. 
Be your be yourself, guys. Just Here's the be thing: yourself. it's not that I haven't seen porn. I don't watch it like that to know who these people are. Mm, mm, mm. I don't. I can barely name actors and actresses in movies. You think I'm able to do it in porn flicks? You guys got some more back there. We were laughing because Kahao said I've been <laughs> named 25 of them. Yeah, can you name 25 of them? <laughs> go, Ben. Can, can I name, name 20? your top 25. Yeah. There can you I go. Name, okay, you guys are about to ask me right now. Can I name 25 porn stars? Go off. Okay. All right. We're going to do men, then we're going to do females. What? 25 each? You can name no, 25 no, no, not, men? No, I'm just going to name oh, 20. Oh, oh, um, Mandingo. Man. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Mandingo, she says. Keep right. go. Okay, go. go Can I go. name 25 porn stars? Okay. All right. So, uh, Skin Diamond, Honey Gold, Asa Akira, Nautica Thorne, um... Mika Tan, I'm just doing the Asians, Asians right now. Mika Tan. Um, uh, we are all flabbergasted back here by the fact that you said I'm just naming the Asian ones. I, I, I want to <laughs> yeah. I I, I, I do it in order. Flabbergasted. I want to do it in order. Um, but now my my mind's gonna so in I'm, order of what? I want to. Okay, so I'm gonna put the Asian ones to the side for a second. So it's five Asian ladies. Then you got black ladies. You got Diana DeVoe. You got Janet Jackman. You got Janet Jackman. You got Cinnamon Love. You got Obsession. You got um, uh, Pinky. Uh, you got uh, uh, Roxy Reynolds. Um, you got Tiana Trump. How many am I up to now? Eleven. Um, you're up to. I'm up to eleven. You got Tiana Trump. You have uh, Chanel Hart. Um, Cherry Hilson. Cherry, not Carrie Hilson. Cherry Hilson. Uh, Minaj Araz. You have Ebony Eyes. Um, you have Dynamite. You have Champagne. You have D. How many am I up to now? 18. 18. All right. Then you throw some guys in there. Mandingo, Brian Pumper, Nat Turner. Uh, Nat Turner? Nat Turn Her. <laughs> Turn her. I his do name. love these names. Uh, <laughs> Jake Steed, Kieran Lee. He bosses with me. Shout out to Kieran. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's him and his. Oh, Last Fire. Um, uh, oh, uh, Ricky Johnson. Ricky's room. That's twenty five. That's twenty five. You didn't name any white people. Oh, that's before I get to the white people. Like, I mean, I didn't even get to the Latin ladies you yet. Didn't even get Olivia Lovely, Isis Taylor. Um, it's before I before I get to the to the to the white ladies. Like it, it Well, it, man. But Demi Sutra, Jenna Fox, all of these people, those are two black ladies. I could probably name you 100, 150 porn stars. Like, because well, no wonder you look at us for not being able to name one. But you said you were about that life. But it let, was a lifestyle for you. But let me tell you something, but let me tell you something else though. Seriously, I'll tell you something else. In a real way. There are other porn stars that I know that you guys know. Ooh. Jenna Jameson. Oh. I know, I, I know that you guys know who some of these people I are. I forgot about. We forget about them, Van. I know because it's not front of mind. Because you, I know what you like now. Okay. Everybody Mandingo. knows, everybody knows who Mandingo is. Everybody knows who Mandingo is. Why? Because he's got that thing. Because he got that. <laughs> Oh! Man, shout out to Mandingo. Shout out to uh, Lexington Steel. Never heard of. You never heard of Lexington Steel? What? I'm serious. I'll tell you if I have. Cherokee. You ever Cherokee the ass? The ass? Cherokee? Never heard of her? All right. Look, I, I, I you gotta go run out of here. Look, you guys, I'm telling you, the debate that we're gonna have, I wanna have a higher learning debate series. I actually think that the Thursday show should be a debate show. From here on out? Yep. <laughs> I think from here on out, the Thursday show should be a debate show. We should have a porn advocate 
and an anti-porn person or either somebody from the ACLU and an anti-porn person, we would moderate, you and I, the discussions on different things, porn, anti-porn stuff like this, the gun debate, we should do that on Higher Learning, Higher Learning Debate Series. All right. Maybe once a month to start. Once a month to start. I'm for it. I like it. Right. I like it. And when you say it, you mean Mandingo Stang. Okay, cool. Um, You know what? Take us out with Van just naming porn stars. I could name more. (laughs) <laughs> like it's it's, it's Asians it's Asian ladies in my head right that I forgot I could name more but look I, I don't feel bad it's like the NBA we're not telling you to feel bad yeah, we're we're more but, so just like wow that you can name and then you're shaming us for not knowing I'm I'm not shaming you guys for not knowing I'm saying I know you know more so name me hold on hold on close your computer close your computer for three hundred dollars. For three hundred dollars, name four porn stars. Can they already have been named? No. Well, I have no. I will be here all night. Mm-mm-mm. We will literally be here all night. Actually, that's actually I'm proud of you guys. I will say this: I'm proud of all of you guys. You guys spent your time doing other things than investing into Lubriderm. All right, we gotta go. Take you take thing caps off. <laughs> but do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan Jr. I'm Rachel Lynn Lindsay. Okay.